Mama Sherry's Soul Food Shack has hit rock bottom. We have put so much of our own money in it and on it, we no longer have it. The customers just aren't biting. Ten past one, Saturday lunchtime. And this place should be absolutely round. There's too many cooks doing all the wrong things. <laughs> oh, fuck me <laughs> now. If you turned up for work half an hour late in my kitchen, you'd be home for the day. Looking for a new fucking job. Turn this into a professional outfit within a week. That would take a miracle. I've definitely got it. <laughs> it's time to get serious. If you don't break away from this stove, I swear to God the business is going to close. You need, young man, Eggs. a fucking rocket up your ass. I'm not going to lose my business. Brighton, London by the sea. Loads of locals and a steady stream of hungry tourists. Nesting just a stone's throw away from the seafront is Mama Sherry's Soul Food Shack, offering classics from America's deep south. Oh, nice, nice, nice. The big soul mama, AKA Sherita Jones, has raised 33 foster children, but running her first restaurant is proving a far bigger handful. It's all gonna just kinda go fall apart. <laughs> so I don't want it to fall apart. God, it's definitely a shack on the outside anyway. Fucked up caravan. Is this it? Sharita. Sharita, Gordon, yes, good hello, to see Gordon. you. Nice to see you. This Welcome. is small and quaint. Welcome. It's quaint, it's cosy. I'll say. It's, it's, like, so walking, it's like walking into your front, front lounge. Thank yeah. you. And see? that's what it's supposed to be about. Because I tend to spend all my life here, this has got to be my front room. Otherwise, when do I get to kick my feet up? So this is where After three and a half years, despite throwing everything at this place and working seven days a week, Sharita is still in serious debt to the tune of £65,000. And who's the chef? I'm kind of the chef. I come from a background of big mamas and all of them cook. Mm -hmm. It's called stick to your ribs, basically. Stick to your roots. Ribs! A rib, right. Stick <laughs> to your roots, to your ribs. <laughs> Mama Sherry's shack seats 40 at an extremely intimate squeeze. But, I yes. am not a West Indian but sadly for Sharita, that's not often a problem, as weekday trade is virtually non-existent. It's great at the weekends, mm -hmm. but somehow we've discovered that we're in a hole. We're just in this hole, a financial hole, that we can't claw our way out of. Mm -hmm. Have you made any money since you've been open? Nope, not a penny. Not a single have we made since we've been uh, open? It's hard to put our finger on okay. why. Is it critical? I mean, yes. how long? How long can you continue staying like this? Truthfully. <sighs> Truthfully, I'd say three to six months. Maximum. Maximum. So I can no customers. No, no money. Mind your head. Right. Here it's you time go. to check out the kitchen. God. Sharita calls herself the cook, but Brian Moyo is her head chef. So who's in charge? How you doing, dude? Thank you. Do you do this and all that and Paul and... Uh, I try not yeah. to. <laughs> <laughs> we eat on going for cliches. You know? So are you the head chef or are you the cook? What are you? Um, I'm confused. Well, I, I was employed to come as a head chef. Right. But because of uh, problems with financing uh -huh. and things like that... So Don't let me stop you. I took a, a, a sit back. So who, do, who writes the menu? Uh, Sherita has written everything. She does uh -huh. everything, basically. So you've got a cushy job then, really, haven't you? You could say that. As a chef, yes. Pretty chill. <laughs> huh? Yeah, as a chef, yes, it's pretty chill. But uh... A head chef who doesn't write the menu and only works 35 hours a week. Next, he'll be telling me he's forgotten how to cook. Here you go. We've Thank you. We've got some catfish goujons with uh -huh. hush puppy and our homemade pineapple salsa. Yours, yes. Mm. It's actually quite nice. Very, um... Very delicate fish, and um, it's nicely fried. Very light, really nice. Thank you. Be back with your mains. Take it down, bring it to my mama, not oh the biggest. Oh my god! For mains, my plate's piled high with a clumsy mess of ribs, spicy chicken jambalaya, and corn and bean succotash. I hope he likes it. Hmm. <laughs> okay, Fucking hell. There's ribs. Mm. So tender. I have to say, it's straight on the plate with no 
real care, but it tastes phenomenal. This may be the first time I actually go back to the kitchen with an empty plate. Um, thank you. Bloody delicious. Thank you. And you know what? Thank you. I thought it was going to be really spicy, but no, it turned no, down, and no. it was spot on. Thank and it you. actually made me feel like I was back at Mum's for the first time. Oh. And having oh. some home cooking. Oh. It was very good. Oh, don't get me crying. The, 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 <laughs> there are things I would change. OK, fine. And, tweet, and I'm, happy, I'm happy to but hear about that. But in general... That. i got to take a picture of this plate. <laughs> <laughs> I know it sounds crazy. I know it sounds crazy. Mama, mind oh Mind your God. head, mind your head. Oh, God. I fed Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> and he cleaned his plate. How the hell did you turn that thing off? She doesn't shut up. Rabbit, 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 rabbit. rabbit. Shit. Charita's down-home style should be a unique selling point but it ain't working. I need to go back to the kitchen and find out why. Friday, and Sharita's tackling most of the day's preparation single-handedly in a desperate bid to save money. Part of this is, you know, you've got to get your hands dirty. Yeah, of course, sure. Yeah. Marinating meat, making dressings, sauces and it's baking marinating. are all crucial things to prepare yep. in advance of a busy service. And it's just shaking off the excess. Yep. But deep-frying chicken wings eight hours in advance of their first booking? That can't be right. Yeah. Just so why do you cook them now? Because if you cook them off now and leave them to cool, when the order comes in, it's just a matter of picking out how many we need, and they go back in, and they come back up to a nice... And they don't go dry? No. Mm -mm, no. I'm beginning to suspect dry. the good old home cooking isn't as wholesome as it could be. Mmm, they smell good. Most yeah. of it's coming from the freezer rather than the soul. Oh, so how many freezers have we got? Thirteen. Thirteen? Fuck me. By the time Brian turns up, there's not much left for him to do. So, I mean, you can't really feel like you're head chef if you've got Sharita in the kitchen every morning cooking the food and you come in That's and what just I'm saying. Yeah, you know. send it. In the sense that you're not actually really cooking, you're just coming in and putting things together. Putting things together, yes. It's kind of hard, yes. Have you lost motivation? Yes. So, if Sharita's head chef's gone off the boil, I'm hoping her remaining crew of part-timers have a bit more spunk. Heading up front of house is Lauren. She arrives 10 minutes late for the evening service. 20-year-old AD seems to be more committed to his glamorous day job. So why panel beating? Uh, I don't know, it's just like yeah, yeah, finish at half four every day. Kitchen porter Gavin lives next door, but he appears to turn up when he feels like it. And Sharita's librarian husband, Phil, hotfoots it back from the day job no, to become basement yeah. barman and resident DJ. <laughs> he looks like your washer-upper. No, no way. No. I have to know to wash he does that as well. These and numerous other part-time staff are all members of Mama Sherry's big laid-back family. So when he's in the ship, in the middle of service, he slowed them down like fucking Michael Jackson. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> oh, fuck you, <yeah>, now. <laughs> I hate to ruin a good party, but... If you want to run a successful business, then the terms, laid back and professional, just don't mix. It's not just about how good the food tastes, it's about how it fucking gets there as well. And that is crucial. I can't wait to see this team of jokers in action. All right, so we get going, they're hungry. Immediately, it's clear who's the mummer in this kitchen. I'm getting you a chili pepper, because you ain't going to No, just the one. Can I take the seeds out, at least? Sharita talks to them like they're her children, and she's the only one cooking anything from fresh. I need to start cooking up these fajitas now. OK, Sharita, all of the seconds uh, part you're in. All right, OK. Two potato skins, onion rings, cornbread, two pieces. Can I get some jambalaya heated up, please? For Brian and Aidy, it's just an elaborate heating and plating up exercise. Mountains of messy food, school dinner style. A D minus must try harder. That's hot gravy. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> on hot turkey. Yep. Serves on cold plates. Yep. With cold salad. Yep. It's first. <laughs> What's he laughing at? <laughs> this is serious. This is you weren't gonna break sweat there, were you? Okay. Oh you were. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no, he's about to kick off. When? There's twice as many staff as there need be. This should be an absolute breeze. But Sharita's yeah. killing herself, yeah. trying to do everything. We got everything in the basement, yeah? Everything's gone. Yeah, everything's gone. Ugh. Shit. 
paying two fully qualified chefs to dress and send a plate of nachos. Come on, that's a sure fine way to break a business. Fucking hell, it's painful. Okay. Very, very painful. Right. Tonight, on several occasions, you're standing here, cooking away in a world of your own. Yeah. And these guys standing there just almost playing with themselves mm -hmm. because they're waiting for something from you. If you are the head chef, yes. then you're going to have to start taking the reins. Yeah. Yeah. I want to try and get through a, a busy night without pissing your pants with laughter. Two hours pure concentration mm -hmm. without laughing. OK. And I bet you can't do it. I can do it. Are you fucking smiling already? <laughs> if there was ever a case of too many cooks, this is it. One of them will have to go. <laughs> the pants are not ready. Yeah. I said no smiling, no laughing. Okay. Serious. OK. It Set a fucking example. I'm going and to. Do not be scared to get rid of baggage. Brighton's best-kept secret, Mama Sherry's soul food shack. It's so well-kept, it's losing a thousand pounds a week. No one here. 20 past 10 in the morning. No By day here. three, I've uncovered a couple of reasons why. I know it's chilled, but fucking hell. It's not as chilled as a snapper. Why is no one here this time in the morning? It's ridiculous. Firstly, the food's good, but it could be so much better. Where's, uh, where's Brian? Let me give you a hand. Brian? Yeah. I have no idea. He should be here Secondly, there are far too many staff, and most of them aren't pulling their weight. Late this morning? Yes, uh, About half an hour. What did you do to him when he's late? Nothing. Nothing? <laughs> I'm just going to wash up right now. So you're washing up as well? Yes. She's in, she opens up, brings all the supplies upstairs. You should be ashamed of yourself. Brian. Sherita's next task is to make a huge batch of macaroni cheese that will last her for two whole weeks. Let me just keep this going. Ah, oh, this is coming up nicely. Hot from the stove, her food is irresistible. People will travel miles to taste it. I like that. Yeah? Yeah, very nice. But like a lot of her home cooking, this lot is destined for the freezer, where its delicious texture and flavour will be lost forever. We you cook beautifully. Yeah. And I don't understand why you want to freeze it okay. when it's so tasty. Well I, well, I think, I don't think I want, it's not a case of wanting No, I think to. you've got into a habit. I've gotten a habit. Which is a lazy habit. Mm. You're not lazy because no, you not. work so bloody hard. Yeah, He's lazy. It's, 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 it's a matter of... <laughs> <laughs> He's okay. definitely lazy. If you turned up for work half an hour late in my kitchen, trust me, you'd be home for the day. No, no. Looking for a new fucking job. To yeah. be honest, it's no wonder okay. Brian's lost heart. The man's been working in the kitchen for as long as I have. But to save money, he's been sidelined. So much so, he's rarely involved in actually making any of the food. There is a kind of a method to my madness. But you're throwing it together. Um, it looks like I'm throwing it together, but no. I throw it together the exact same way every single week. So when you're not doing it, who does it? I'm doing it. <laughs> uh, that's my point. OK. <laughs> if Sharita was using Brian properly, they could ditch the freezers once and for all. And macaroni. the macaroni and cheese is nearly there. That looks delicious. Yeah. I think that should go to staff food. <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> Does look good, doesn't it? As it stands, few customers will taste the food at its best. She has thrown away her unique selling point. And boy, does she need one. It's uh, ten past one Saturday lunchtime, and this place should be absolutely round. And there's not a soul in here. This is dire. Saturday and Sunday are your prime days for business. But like many failing restaurants, Sharita's making some classic mistakes. Poor man's meat pie. Yeah. Eight pounds. Yeah. I know it's going to be good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you go onto the menu here, you've got main courses at yeah. 14. Yeah. 15 pounds. Mm -hmm. Why have they gone up so expensive? Um, to pay my bills. Mm -hmm. To be blunt, it was bank manager. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, accounting, and I was saying, help me, help me, how do I do this? They say, you've got you to raise your prices. You gotta raise your prices. Always the bank manager's solution. Yeah, well, put your it, prices it, and up. it was it was literally down to yeah. the bank manager. Yeah. Well, he's an arsehole. Oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's killing the business. Mm. I want to look at restructuring the menu. Okay. Making it a little bit shorter. Okay. Tweaking the portion size. All oh, right. Having less come back. Sixty yep. percent are bones come mm -hmm. back, but it's that forty percent I'm gonna work on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the objective for every customer coming through that door is to have a starter, 
yeah. a mains and a dessert. Okay. You wait and see the turnover treble if you can squeeze three courses out of them. Okay. But before we can squeeze anything out of anybody, okay. we need customers. And if they're not coming to us, we've got to take Mama Sherry's finger-licking food to them. So, got the meatloaf. Oh my yeah. god. Yeah, got the ribs. Yeah. Okay, got the chicken. That smells amazing. Oh, it's smelling so good. So good. And who better to flaunt it than the mama herself? Don't be shy. <laughs> Whoa. I'm going to come to you since you're not coming to me. This is all cooked fresh at Mama Cherry's Soul Food Shack just around the corner there. Yeah? Pretty, pretty good. This particular food is called soul food, OK? Yeah. Cooked from the soul, from the heart. Boy, she's good. A soul food evangelist. And she's out to convert the whole of Brighton. Soul food! Can I hear you all say it? Soul food! All right. Just wind her up and let her go. That's nice, isn't it? Oh, That's good. Good. Yeah. <laughs> Give me some more wings. Big all right. Don't so forget, this time it's on the house. Next yep. time they're paying you. Yep. Did you cook me? Yes, I did. There's no doubt that Shrita's a terrific cook, but she's employing Brian to do that job. And I'm beginning to realise she's wasted in the kitchen. What's it called? So good. Good. Just call me Mama. <laughs> Mama. You got it. With Saturday night service about to begin, it's time to get this shack in order. It's pretty obvious that the business is in dire straits. You know, that's real. It's real. That's the truth. Watching you guys over the last couple of days, you actually treat it like it's your fucking home. Chilled, relaxed. And this lady here, you talk to her almost as if it's your mum. Mm-hmm. And that really has to stop. If this is going to go any further, and if it doesn't work, mm. not only are you out of a business and your livelihood's gone, yeah. all of you guys are out of a fucking job. Yeah. You've got no work. Yeah. So when it's that far down, we really have to dig deep and come up with sensible ideas. Yeah. And tonight, I'm going to ask you to stay out of the kitchen. Okay. You've yeah. got so much to sell. Yeah. And you, you're a fucking good cook. Thank you. So, yeah. Sharita, let him cook. I'm going to let him. I'm going to yeah. let him. I am. Good. Yeah. You have to pass the reins over now. And if you don't break away from this stove, mm -hmm. I swear to God, the business is going to close. And let them do the job it. that you fucking pay the money for. Okay. Yeah? Yep. I'm going to go put some makeup on. Because <laughs> I'm going downstairs. Sharita's street hustling has secured a fully booked restaurant tonight. If we're going to get through it, we need to get this kitchen working like an efficient, okay. well oiled machine. Eddie, are you doing the. Time to whip up a bit of professionalism into these boys. Uh, Gavin, can you take those starters and food downstairs? Yeah, we're standing there doing nothing. Five to five. There you go. Five. Thank yeah. you. Okay, we're standing there. Yeah. Open up your eyes, yeah, and get in fucking working, okay? You're running this place tonight, you know that. Yeah. You're going to prove to her downstairs that you can do it. Yeah. yeah? Not just to her, but to yourself and me. Okay. I said no smiling, no laughing. Okay. Serious. Okay. Yes? Yeah. Let's go. Now. Good evening. Hi. Have you had a chance to look at yes. the menu? Yeah. Yeah. Downstairs, Sharita slipped effortlessly into the role of the hostess with the mostess. Any of you eat macaroni and cheese? We do. Yeah. I'm telling you, it's fantastic. Gordon grated my cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Brian's taking his first decision as the head chef. Pre cooked buffalo wings are off the menu. From now on, they're being cooked to order. Yep. Chicken's been cooked from fresh. Nice. People already have played to stand around in 20 minutes. Well, almost. The rest of the food's going out just as Sharita's always done it. Hot food, cold plates, uninspiring salads. Like four pounds for that. That's shocking. And jaw-breaking meatloaf. What time are we close tonight? <laughs> you laughing? Um... But let's not try to run before we can walk. Can I get this one as soon as possible? Yeah, going, 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 but now she's front of house. Sharita's using every trick in the book to boost business. Five minutes. So you go right next door to my friendly pub. Okay? There you go. And I will uh, see you in five. See you in five. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Okay. Brian, move up. Two hours in, and the food's not going out quick enough. Sharita's faith in Brian is dwindling fast. These guys have been in a long time. I got kids down there. Yeah, but their starters have just gone. They've got. Okay. 
What happened there with those starters? With those starters? They're done. So already in the lift? Yeah. Yeah. There, Eddie, aren't they? What? These starters. What one? For this table. These ones? No, I'm doing them now. Oh, shit. I just thought that they're gone, man. For Brian, yeah. three years of living in a culinary coma is a hard habit to break. He's beginning to lose it. And Sharita's constant interruptions aren't exactly helping. Come on, Brian. Don't lose it now, yeah? No. What else on this table? I need to see. What's on it? You got, you got hot, hot wings and barbecue chicken wings. I've got the hot wings. I need whatever else is there. Because they are getting restless. Oh, dear. That all they order? I am so sorry. I'll tell you what the problem was. With fresh food, yeah, you can't expect the food to just jump on your plate just no, like that. We can explain to that to her after. Yeah. Huh? Chicken takes a good 14, 20 minutes to make sure that you know you don't kill anyone. Okay, has that pig feet go on? Because it needs to go on now. Because it takes the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Every minute you're in here, we're losing money. <laughs> Fucking hell. So, what do you think of that meatloaf? That'd be good. Thank you. Didn't I tell you? Didn't I tell you? I thought the kitchen got off to a really good start. You were slightly nervous being mm -hmm. down there because yeah. you were sort of not spying on them, but coming up, yeah. agitated. Yeah. Yeah. You lost it, Brian. A little bit, yes. A little bit. And things just got a little bit on yeah. the You said something interesting, though. Yeah. Yeah. Trudy has to understand it's going to take three or four minutes longer because I'm cooking from raw. Yeah. And the benefit is the customer. But I think this guy, yeah. with the help of Aidy, mm. can get faster. Yeah. Much, much faster. I mean, how would you yeah. sum up? You're in the dining room yeah, tonight. Yeah, uh, uh, it felt good, because I'm telling you, uh -huh. for three and a half years being here, it was the first Saturday night uh -huh. that I have spent downstairs. Right. downstairs. They've seen you, you know, that's the face they want to see yeah. when they come to see Mama. Downstairs, I'm going to be cracking the whip a lot harder. Yeah. It's your business, yeah, so, of course. You know, and that's what I was whip. thinking, yeah. you know. <laughs> i got to crack it. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. OK. Thank you. Good. Okay. Thank you, guys. Let me go down here Fire and finish off. seeing, because i got a few more desserts to sell. Yeah. <laughs> If Brian's going to win Sharita's respect as her head chef, he needs to become more involved in preparing the food as well as cooking it. Number 13, lucky for some. But since his hours were cut, he's been dropped in a catch-22 situation. Where's little lady gone? Hey. Brian's been left holding the baby. It became a problem because Claire had to go to work. Yeah. And uh, we had to find a way of meeting uh, the, the bill at the end of the month. Yeah. You know, and that's why uh, I can't do Tuesdays and Wednesdays. The whole thing is just confused. Yeah. You know. As Brian's involvement with the food has diminished, so too has his confidence. The first time he made meatloaf two years ago, it was a disaster. So we're going to prove that Brian can not only do it, but do it better. How much influence do you have on the menu? Even sometimes I'll do a menu or something, but she changes it anyway, so really, at the end of the day, my influence disappears. But you've got to be strong now. Yes. If she's going to concentrate in the that dining room, yes. you're going to be running the kitchen. Yes. You have to be strong. Yes. Huh? Yes. Yes. The problem with Sharita's meatloaf is the bacon. By the time it's cooked, it's like cutting into leather. The back bacon you saw dries out. It's hardly any fat in back bacon. No okay. Fat. So, you know, fat. streaky bacon. Um, Place one nice mm -hmm. fatty piece of bacon there. Mm -hmm. As it's cooking, mm -hmm. yeah, it's putting moisture exactly. inside the meatloaf. Yeah? Fantastic. You know, if, if I put my foot down and say, no, this is like this, like that, I think I can see myself going far. You know, I can achieve things. It's, uh, it's a happy feeling, you know. It's a happy feeling. Mmm, wow. just look at them. Good. The seasoning okay. is just right. It's mm -hmm. not too salty. Nice. No. I think that's fine. Mm -hmm. Doesn't need any. Doesn't need anything else. Anything else at all. With Brian's confidence slowly returning, now I've got to work on Sharita. She excels as a natural cook and a great hostess. Oh my God, that's everything on my menu. Sharita. <laughs> but when it comes to business, she's a self-confessed numbskull. Yeah, one and a half meters long. <laughs> And this tells me the money. The money is, look out, that's a bit shorter. Shorter, yeah. <laughs> we want it the other way around. I want it the other way around. Definitely. <laughs> but it's not right. just the takings that are the problem here. 
200 grams of butter. Right. Yeah. Like a beautifully risen cake, successful restaurants only thrive when three key business factors Good. are working in close harmony. Gradually adding 200 grams of flour. We establish one third staff costs, yeah. one third food costs, and one third gross profit. Combine all those ingredients into one recipe. Yeah. Chemistry. You have okay. the most amazing cake. Mm -hmm. And that's how any good business works. Yeah. At the moment, Sharita's business cake is way thinking? off course. Okay. I'm going to show you something, what we've got currently happening here at okay. the shack. With few midweek customers, okay. Sharita's gross okay. profits are dangerously low. Very, very little oh. profit. Her food okay. costs are reasonably healthy, but her massive overheads are crippling her. Well, I just want to show that what it's going to cost you when we start adding really high staff costs. So there's an imbalance oh already. God. Yep. <laughs> Bloody hard. Now I'm doing this on purpose to prove a point. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. yeah. You can't complete a recipe for a successful business when you've got an imbalanced yeah. situation. You can tell me to fuck off, but how much do you pay yourself a month? I pay a month, uh. To feel well, I get around 200 a week, that's it. I'm the lowest out of the kitchen. 200 pounds a week? A week, yeah. 800 pounds a, a month. month. yeah. You're working seven days a week? I'm working seven days a week. That's yeah. a fucking disgrace. I mean, 80 gets more than me some weeks. A commie chef mm -hmm. that's part time mm -hmm. gets paid more than you. Mm -hmm. You're far too fucking soft. Oh. No, I you know. You really are far too soft. Mm. Well, it stops yeah. now. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. That is a profitable business yeah. with the right ingredients. Uh huh, yeah. And that is what you're currently running. Right. Have a think. Okay. And let me know which one you'd like to eat. Very good. Oh, I just feel like crying. <laughs> Why are you crying, Sharita? Because I'm not going to lose my business. Nearing the end of my week in Brighton. Ah, oh, fucking bollocks. Not sure I've found my soul yet, but Brian is finally beginning to behave like a head chef. And Sharita is undergoing a transformation from mother to matron. And from now on, she'll be ruling this roost with an iron hand. This is not a drop in center. But we still have a fundamental problem a crippling lack of weekday customers. What we need is a gimmick, a bargain that will ensure the shack's full to the rafters all week long. The idea is, is to sell uh -huh. your restaurant yeah. per table. OK. OK, so a table of six. Uh -huh. Six chairs. Yep. Ten pound a head. Uh-huh. Sixty pound for that table. If that worked yeah. every night at uh -huh. ten pound a head, yeah. there's 360 pound yeah. in the till. Think of it this way. Yeah. They'll spend the same amount of money... On their alcohol. ..on alcohol. <laughs> My plan is to create an exciting three-course fixed buffet for each table, simplifying the service and cherry-picking from the existing menu. Mm -hmm. OK. But before we do the big presentation to Sharita, I've got to inject some life into those god-awful limp salads. How much does salad cost on the menu? It's four fifty. Four pound fucking fifty. Uh, do you think that's real good value for money for what you're serving? Not really. No? Huh? Made a very simple dressing here. Roasted cumin. Yes. Yeah? A little bit of olive oil. Uh -huh. Fresh lime. Uh-huh. Okay. Look at the difference now. And start building it up. And get some colours in there. Yeah? £4.50 for a salad. It's a fucking joke. Um, sweet potatoes. Uh, huge in soul food, yeah? Yes. All they've done is been blanched. Yes. Into the pan. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Nicely coloured. Don't move them until they've got colour on there, OK? The more you move them around, what happens? They break up. They break up. That voice in the background. <laughs> She's in the kitchen again. And, lady, the secret here now is to keep them nice and hot. They go really nice, almost like a roast uh, yeah. potato. This yeah. is not a difficult, finicky thing to do. No. For me, you know, when you look at the style of Shrita's food, it's really important to keep it rustic. rustic Don't yes. want anything fancy. I'm not being funny, but Gavin, the yeah, kitchen porter, you. can get this stuff done. Yeah. Huh? Oh, that is good. Damn. Mm. I'm in heaven. What mm. I'm trying to do is mm. make the place look less cluttered. Yes, mm. I yeah? understand. Because the food speaks for itself. So, mm -hmm. yes. And sometimes I see these mountains of food going out. Yes. 
okay? Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's too much. So come here. Here you go. Lick it. <laughs> oh, and you know you'll want to. <laughs> what can I say? Cousin Gordon's sweet potato salad? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what it's going to be called. Mix it. Mix it. I cannot mix it doing that. <laughs> that was better, actually. I did better just Thank so. you, Chef. Seriously, Chef. No more food piled high on cold plates. Okay, I want to get these bowls filled up. At ten pounds a head, as long as it's delicious and looks good, the customers are going to love it. Brian can clear the frozen backlog and start from fresh. Nice. Make it look nice. Yeah, we've got to sell this, yeah. Yeah. We're really sell it. Simple, sexy, and irresistible soul food. Well. Come on, then do it. Yeah, yeah, do something. Do something. Yeah. Oh, You're driving around the bend, you know that. Aidy, what do you think? Table of four. Huh? Fucking good. Yeah. This, 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 this is fantastic. Honestly, yes. what leftovers? Right. What do you, you do with this? Yeah. Fucking hell. Right, Charita. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, we've gone through the fridge, seen what's even used up, yes. Uh, yes. Um, and uh, every day is going to change. Yes. Here, we just made a really nice uh, vegetable um, uh, pig lily. Mm -hmm. And it just marinades oh, through brown sugar and oh. vinegar. And look at that there for four people. Yeah. You've got a mug of soup as well, don't forget. And I think it's quite sort of fresh and new. Yeah. yeah. And it sort of deformalizes the restaurant because it is soul yeah. food yeah. and it's. You know, across mm -hmm. the table. Yeah, it's yeah lovely. But I think it's, it, it also introduces everybody to a different, different taste yeah. of all the foods. Yeah. Everyone is having different mm -hmm. taste of everything. Yeah. yeah. And the idea, of course, is once they've experienced this, they come yeah. back Friday or Saturday yeah. for a full thing. Yeah. Yeah, this looks great. Good. Mm-hmm. I like this. Tomorrow we're going live. Oh, don't worry. I'm gonna be now. You said live. You wait. I'm gonna be live. It seems Charita's well and truly sold on her new idea. Whoa! OK. I just got to think of a word for tapas. I ain't going to come up with my own word. I'm going to make a word up. But I guess I can't call it slappers, because that sounds too rude. <laughs> and short, dynamic, yep. step to the point. Yeah. Yeah? Good. The mama's on a crusade. Right, customers. OK, customers. Soul in a bone, all right? And we're launching tomorrow evening, having a big party down there. Ten pounds each, three courses, delicious. That makes it excellent, yeah. Yeah, yeah. OK. I'm doing ribs, jambalaya, barbecue chicken, going yeah. Just brownies. Yeah. Bring, bring some friends with you, OK? You love the food. Yeah. Fantastic. By tomorrow night, Sherita wants the whole of West Sussex to know about Mama Sherry's. This is Southern FM, that's six of the best non-stop, wrapping up with the House Martins happy hour, thorn in my side with me. And it's brand new midweek eating concept, Soul in a Bowl. Oh, come on then, Nicky, give me some of this. The ribs, the ribs okay. This is ribs. OK, here we go. Mm. Yeah. Gorgeous, mm. absolutely lovely. You eat, I'll talk, OK? <laughs> when you're hungry and you're in need of a serious food attack, just come to Mama Cherry's The Soul Food Shack. We've got Soul in a Bowl, three yummy courses served on a platter, fried chicken jambalaya and more. We're talking soul food tappers. The price is so right, so come to the shack tonight. Mm. Well, well, I'm well, memorable well, night. Okay. Seeing as you brought us breakfast, you can have that huge plug for nothing. Oh, thank, um, you. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Breakfast was delicious. On a normal Wednesday night, Sherita would be lucky to get eight customers. Good morning, Mama Cherry's gonna help you. But whilst we've been out, bookings for this evening's launch have gone through the roof. Early or late, I'm doing probably two sittings, a seven o'clock and a nine o'clock sitting. It's all coming together, except for one small hitch. There's no Brian, there's no AD, there's no Gavin. No one's here. Brian's stuck with a fucking babysitter somewhere, God knows where. And um, you know what? If they're ever going to get this place right, then they're going to have to really understand discipline, because this is a joke. Big day, no one in the fucking kitchen. Where have you been? Looking for babysitters, Chef. Looking for, come on, go and get changed, yeah? Nice. I thought you were going to be here by 10. I was meant to be at 10, but yeah. uh, I tried to phone a girl who looked after them yesterday. Yeah. She said, no, go, just like that, out of the blue. Get changed, yeah, and let's get fucking started, yeah? yeah. Let's go, yeah? I was hoping the renewed responsibility of running this kitchen would relight Brian's passion for cooking. You need, young man, eggs. A fucking rocket up your ass. And with it, bring a new commitment to both raising the quality sure? and the urgency with which the food's delivered. How about sweating off the onions at the same time? They're in front of there, look. Oh, mm. OK. There you go. But even if Brian was making the new improved meatloaf twice as fast, 
fucking useless. It still wouldn't be quick enough. I'm, I'm just testing it now to see what uh, flavors have come out. Yeah, but you haven't put the wet mixture in there yet, so how can you identify the texture? Oh, yes. Get the recipe complete first, and add the breadcrumbs, the then do the fucking yeah. test. Jesus Christ. Some mothers do have them. Huh? And I've got one. Thankfully, Shreet is completely unaware that Brian's already losing it upstairs. So how's it looking now? Um, it's looking full. No, no, what no, day no, of the week am I? Wednesday. Uh, when, this is wonderful. No, perfect. Uh, and, and 50, mm -hmm. 55 customers yeah. tonight. That's 550 pound on food. Yep. The same again. Yep. Hopefully on, on the drink. Drink. That's yep. a thousand pound in the till. Yep. Which is equivalent to a Friday night. Take. Yeah, yeah, that's a Friday night. Show a touch of flexibility. It's a new start the for the shack, and tonight every Plus member of Shrita's staff has got to give 100%. OK, here are a set of rules that each and every one of you are now going to abide by. And it's not a governing rule, it's an understanding of what this business needs to go further and forward. I need everybody here on time. And on time means if I say you start at six, you get here at quarter two. That way you have your cigarettes, you get changed, you chat, you have your coffee, and so that at 6 o'clock you're on the floor, okay? The next one is there is always something to do. And if you can't think of it, ask me. The queen <laughs> is now in on residence. The floor. Yes, exactly. Sharita is now on the floor. Yep, that's hey. where I'm going to be. And to confirm that, we're going to raise the flag. Okay. Yes? All right. Okay. Okay. Sharita Go is back. in residence, that. yes? Here, and that's where she Hold stays. That. I want you to pull this up here together. There you go. Listen, have a great service. Think, customer, push the wine, and work together. Let's get it right. Right fucking now. Let's go. OK, inside. Is your table here? The success of Soul in a Bowl relies on doing large numbers. At only £10 a head, Shrita must fill the restaurant Please twice over. Everything prepped, yes? Are you nervous? Yeah, I am. Good, it's a good sign. Start shitting yourself. Brian, Aidy and Gavin have got to get those platters flying down those stairs, but they're only just peeling the last potatoes. We're going to send you down a tray designed for two. It comes with cornbread and soup as a starter. Soup's excellent. So I hope you enjoy it. I think you, you will. Much. All right. Thank you. Unfortunately, we are fully booked tonight, but... It's the first Wednesday night ever they've had to turn customers away. Slightly spicy sweet potato soup. Table three, two meat tapas. Okay. Just to bring them up to the point. Okay, seven that you've got up there, it's down as three. They've had a person join them, so it's now a four. It's already looking better, but tonight it's got to be perfect. Stop, stop, stop. Take the fucking bowl off the tray. Put it in the bowl. Yeah. I just don't want all the shit on here everywhere. Yeah, I want it nice and clean. Fucking clean. Come on. Yeah. And for the first time this week, Brian's not smiling. That looks lovely. Well done. Right, vegetarian, please, Eddie, send it away. So now we're looking for a four soup and a three soup. Four cornbread, three cornbread. Gavin, you're taking care of the uh, desserts. Uh -huh. Yeah? Chicken. The team is pulling together. Can you, can you put a small, just a uh, bowl of uh, veggie jambalaya on it? And then everyone is going to have uh, the meat. So it's going to come on, fill up pump. If we slow down, I'm going to lose it. Communication is much, much better. Can I get a timing on some of these so I can tell them? Five minutes. Five minutes? Five minutes. Five minutes. On all of them. OK. Keep it going, Ryan. Yes? Yep. ADS? Yes. Uh, eight o'clock. So far, so good, yeah? Doing a good job. If they can keep it going, we might just pull this one off. They said they are stuffed. It was delicious. All of the different flavors that go with it. Fully satisfied. I'm going to take them some dessert. You see that? Empty bowls. And for that dessert, Aidy surprised us all with his homemade pecan pies. That is delicious. That oh, beats panel bad. beating any day, you know yeah. that? Yeah. Any day. At just 40 pence to make each slice, it's a fifth cheaper and ten times tastier than the ones sharita has been buying in. How was the soup? Good? Yes? Yeah? All right. Things okay. must be going OK, because we've hardly seen her in the kitchen all night. Are we starting to turn the tables now? I'm starting to turn, but I've got to get this is a crucial thing out. at £10 a head. Yes, we have to turn I've those tables, yeah? So can we do two trays at the same time? Is it possible? We can. Yeah? Now the pressure's really on. We're losing. Come on, let's get some organisation, guys. Come on. It's still not perfect. A table's called away. You stick that ticket on the tray. No one touches it. But the vibe up here has definitely got more professional. Hey, we're losing valuable time, man. What are you doing? Nice, yeah. We're two minutes over. How's it feeling up here? 
Hot. 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 Pumping. Okay. <laughs> Can't quite believe I'm saying this, but I think Brian's actually breaking a sweat. Guys, looking good. They're loving it. People are loving it. Very tasty. Very good food. You got the salads. Well done, man. Thank you. I haven't eaten anything quite like this before, and it's really nice. Okay, what we need is a two, a six, and a four. Then we're finished. <laughs> you couldn't get better value for money than this. It's, 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 it's remarkable. Let's get it going. Last table goes out just like the first table, yes? I will come back, definitely. Definitely will come back. No, it's good. Really beautiful. Huh? Fucking well done. Yeah, really good. Yeah. That's one day. The real work starts tomorrow, yeah? Yeah. Let's go. I didn't know how much I was going to cope today, you know? I didn't know if I was going to cope or break, basically, but I just one thought in my mind is to get through this. Thursday morning, and the whole team are in early. You got to get that well going. They're clean out of food stocks and fully booked tonight. So they're starting completely from scratch. Fresh home cooking straight from the soul. Hallelujah. Can I just say, you set me a target. Yes. When I spoke to you last night, we hadn't reached that target. 800 pounds last night. Yeah. I asked for 1,000 When I cashed up, I hit 1,000. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, was it 1,080. Fantastic. Yep. And these two. Yeah. They did it. <laughs> Aidy's quietly impressed me this week. But if he really wants to make it as a chef, he's got to decide where his loyalties lie. No, I do, I do enjoy it, but I don't think, I don't like the hours. I don't want to be working those sort of hours when I'm mm -hmm. 30, unless I'm as rich as you. <laughs> and then I won't mind. <laughs> you fucker. <laughs> Can I just say, when I was your age, at the age of 20, yeah, there wasn't enough hours in the fucking day for me to work. So, um, yeah, I'd be very happy to become successful, but you've got to work for it, big boy doesn't just come on a plate where you've got to read the following and it'll happen. And Brian. Well, the success of Mama Sherry's depends on his strength and his commitment more than anybody's. You've really pissed me off this week, you know that? Yes. I felt really bad after, especially yesterday, when I realised that I haven't been really sort of... It's like I didn't care almost. I just thought when I first saw you in the kitchen, you were treating it like a job, no passion. But last night, it came back and I could feel it. You are the head chef? chef. Yes, yes. So act like the head chef. Yes. Take responsibilities as the head chef. Yes, yes. Get a grip, wake up, and fucking stop dreaming. Yeah. And, and I think Sharita knows what she yeah. must do. You are the most marketable asset mm -hmm. of okay. this restaurant. Yep. Well, I'm you... going to be selling myself now. I'm now, out of that kitchen. understand. Just... Kitchen morning, my... AM, yep. hosting the room and being present in yeah. the evening. Yep. You have got That's to it. continue that. I will do. Then I've got to take some control back. Set a fucking example. I'm going yeah. to. Do not be scared to get rid of baggage. Back in December, I spent a week at Mama Sherry's failing soul food shack, and I've never spent a week quite like it. I fed Gordon Ramsay, <laughs> and he cleaned his place. No discipline. If you turned up for work half an hour late in my kitchen, you'd be home for the day, looking for a new fucking job. And £65,000 in debt. Every minute you're in here, we're losing money. <laughs> fucking hell. I whipped the head chef into shape. I said no smiling, no laughing. Okay. Serious. OK. Yeah. You need, young man, Eggs. a fucking rocket up your arm. And the mama found her true calling. If you don't break away from this stove, mm -hmm. I swear to God, the business is going to close. What's it called? So oh, Thank you. Just call me mama. <laughs> mama. You got it. Together, by the end of the week, we had the shack firmly back on track. See the empty bowls? It's a Wednesday night, and I'm just hoping the mama will be glad to have me back. Oh my God. Hello. Oh my God. <laughs> my cousin. You're in the dining room. Of course. Where, where else would I be? I'm out of the kitchen. And soul in the bowl. 
Still going? Going well. I mean, I wish you could have been here last night. We were absolutely full. What, upstairs, on a Tuesday? On a Tuesday. Upstairs no. and downstairs. So, Amazing. Yeah. Staff-wise, how are they going with staff? A lot better. You mm -hmm. see Lauren's actually in a uniform. Hi, Lauren. Uh, yeah. Were you late today? No, no. I came in early today, actually. Early? Yeah. Early. Early. Oh, yes. I know. Yeah. My moonwalker, where is he? Oh, he's upstairs. He? He's upstairs. Oh, yeah, is he's he? where he's supposed to be. Yeah, can I go and see him? <laughs> yeah, yeah, go on, there's a surprise. Oh, it's great to hear that Brian sorted out his babysitting problems. Sharita's been able to take him on full time as Mama Cherry's head chef, and he's a changed man. How you doing, big boy? Are you well? I'm fine, thank you. Good to see you. It's nice to see you again. On weekdays, he's running the kitchen single handed, and he seems to be thriving on the responsibility. That looks fantastic. You're not throwing things in there anymore now. You place them in there nicely. They actually look it's, it's smart. It's better. It looks better. Huh? It does, yes. What's Just happened looks... to you over the last two months? I've been, I've been, huh? uh, I went through a, a phase, like, I mean, the estate you found me in when, when you came in was totally huh? sort of... The Lord's up. come down and touched I, you. I, I'd given up. All credit to Brian. He's taken soul in a bowl and run with it. It's looking really fresh. Now, you also get, you get starters and you get a choice of nachos or soup. Nachos, 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 five nachos. How long is it taking now for the food to come out uh, on the tray? On the tray, it's mm -hmm. taking about at least, I would say about six, seven minutes. It should Good. be five minutes. So quick? Quick as possible as I can be, uh -huh. yeah. So you haven't lost your touch then? Nah, no, not really. <laughs> it's coming back slowly, you know, when you lose a bit of confidence, it's kind of difficult to sort of try and find yourself back again. You know, but at the moment, I'm so into it and I'm going to get it done, mm -hmm. whatever happens. The team has been stripped down, and the customers seem to love their new improved food. It's all good for business. Smells good. Got some jerk chicken, your meat jambalaya, hot wings, barbecue ribs. January's takings are up a staggering 60% on last year, despite now being closed on a Monday. And last Saturday, Sharita filled the restaurant three times over, with Brian and Aidy cooking for a massive 105 customers. I'd love to see you spinning around doing 105 covers, you know that? Yeah? I bet you were moonwalking all over the fucking shop. Oh, I didn't see the moonwalk for a second there. <laughs> OK, here we go. Soul in the bowl. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Go. Let's see what we got here for you tonight. Brian looks well. Is exactly what I wanted him yep. to get some confidence, and he's yep. got that self confidence. I know. I walk in and see what you've done to the menus. Can you see what I've done to the they menus? They look fantastic. Can you see what I've done to the menus? And I've also created my own soul and explaining it out. It's to easy people. format, no easy. intimidation. Yeah. And you know, when I think back to that folder and go mm. through those pages yeah. Yeah. and all that crap on that, mm. you know, I mean, now look. Because it, it was like a book, but I think it was, it yeah. was too much to do. Yeah. It was taken yeah. up too much they're, space. They're, they're smart. What's happening now is I've got people coming in on the weekdays ordering the song in the bowl, and uh -huh. then they say to me, I can't wait to book a weekend because I know now I'm having those ribs. They right. weren't enough. So how worried you were. Yeah. So what, what, what wasn't happening in the business, no. actually. But no. that stress has gone. That... The stress is gone because now I feel that there is a future. Before, yeah. I didn't think there was a future. Yeah. I've got that fire back inside of me. Yeah. You know? I know what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and you know where the business is going. Yeah, and I know where, it, where it's going and where yeah. it can go. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. are you making the perfect fucking sponge cake? <laughs> um, do you remember that one? Yes, I do. You do? I will never forget that one. So if you had I to put it together now, why would it come out your cake? My cake will come out better than your cake. <laughs> <laughs> that means you're cooking the books. <laughs> Long live Mama Cherry and her finger licking food. I'll definitely be back for more. Great, great, great. I bet you you can't make it past 20 metres. 20 metres. You're full of shit, you know that. <laughs> OK. Go for it. Tired? No. Not no. yet. Not yet. <laughs> but you look tired. <laughs> you fucking wimp. Still going. I know. <laughs> Give us a spin. Give us a spin. Spin, spin, spin. <laughs> What's the best recipe for a successful restaurant? Hurry up now, it's gonna be cold. Top French chefs. It looks fucking brilliant. Uh -huh. Oh, fucking hell. Uh, well, fucking hell. Uh, uh. The finest ingredients. Oh, that is incredible. Food fit for a king. Is that all for me? La Riviera in Inverness seems to have it all. Yeah, yeah all done. There's just one thing missing. Customers. Without them, you don't stand a chance. And I should know. 
Two years ago, I had to close my own restaurant in Scotland. I'm just worried that you don't fall into the same fucking trap that I did, and I lost a lot of money. This week, Kitchen Nightmares gets personal. It's been the biggest wake-up call in my entire life. Scotland, home of the brave, home too of haggis, neeps and tatties, and the deep-fried Mars bar. But in Inverness, there's a restaurant on a mission to bring sophisticated French cooking to my fellow countrymen. OK, you send me two prestata right now, please. Yes. It's the vision of French head chef Louis Lefebvre, who's trained in some of the best kitchens in France. I went to work for the president in France, Mr. Chirac. When we had, like, Mr. Bush is coming, our Japanese president is coming, he used to do, like, big function. Service, one syllabus, one brief, table 14, go. Then I moved uh, to work with the Postel Brother in Montpellier, and there are three mission stars. Service, please. I can't wait to meet a young chef with such an impressive pedigree. Hello, Louis. Nice to meet you. Enchanté. Enchanté. And this is the team? Yeah. To help realise his dream, Luix handpicked an impeccably trained brigade. Sous chef yes. Jeffrey has worked in restaurants with both one and two Michelin stars. Did you work with Luix in France? No, no. I, I came basically here uh, because it's a very good opportunity to work with some of the uh, three Michelin stars. Regis also has a Michelin star studied background. How long have you been cooking? Uh, eight years in France uh -huh. and uh, in a different country, you know. And so does the junior of the team, Nicola. And uh, Nicola, whereabouts in France are you from? Brittany. Brittany? Nantes. Got a good football team there, huh? <laughs> but now you support Celtic or Rangers? FC Nantes. FC Nantes. <laughs> no, I did. Club, no. Hey, you're in, you're in Inverness, for God's sake. You've got to support a proper team. <laughs> and Gerard's not letting the side down either. His previous jobs were at Michelin star level as well. Gérard, do you have a Scottish girlfriend? Uh, yes, my French accent is a good point. <laughs> <laughs> 1,400 miles from the French Riviera, Louis has created a mini French stronghold in Inverness. And no one's Scottish in the kitchen? No, no Scottish. No Scottish? There was some, but uh -huh. not anymore. Did you sack them? No, 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 no. It's the first time when I came in the kitchen, I switched off the microwave, put it in the car park, <laughs> and three days after, I was by myself. They got so, the message. Yeah, because they were using microwave all the time. Oh, God. Uh, powder for stock. Oh, uh, deep frying everything, even oh. fondant potatoes. So I had to build a new team, okay. which is good. Louis determined that his dream team is going to get him his very own Michelin star. A bit like Roman Abramovich when he wanted to get the Premiership title. Yeah. He went round and got the best manager, uh -huh. the best football players, and then brought them all over to Chelsea. Yeah. Fantastic. Off and pop, that's good. Yeah. yeah, all done. I think if you can get a Michelin star, that should be great for us. We are looking to achieve like one Michelin star to, to start with. Why not two? And you know. This is new. Even the fridge is top of the league. It's wow. A big walking fridge. Fucking hell, look at the size of it. Yeah. It's like a one bedroom it's, flat. It's, yeah. And the produce is the very best. Flying vegetables in from France is over the top, even for me. But the local shellfish is really top notch. They are amazing. They've been fished on sky. When they come down to London, they're definitely not that fresh, I can assure you. Uh, that is incredible. <sighs> Fuck me. They've got the best of everything here. I mean, really the best of everything. Someone must be paying a small fucking fortune to run this place. And that someone is multimillionaire Barry Larson hot from his 600-acre private shooting estate. He made his fortune from the catering business, but it wasn't exactly fine dining. Morning, Julie. How are you? This is the man who brought Kentucky Fried Chicken, Wimpy and Harry Ramsden's to Scotland. And now he's invested nearly £2 million trying to prove he can make fine dining finger-licking good. Sounds amazing. The sort of dream team that you've put together. Yeah. Slightly concerned about the expense involved in that because Dream <laughs> teams don't come cheap. No, no, they don't. You haven't got any grey hair. So yeah, I've got some. Yeah, I've well, got you're some. hiding it very well. <laughs> Unless you die uh, the fucking thing. No, no, I don't die. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> um, but no, it's expensive. You know what the school is. Yeah, big time. Have you owned hotels? No, I haven't owned. Before? Uh, no, no, I haven't owned uh, hotels before. We've had various restaurants, fast food chains that we've built up, sold out. Really? Um, family restaurants that we we still run. 
but obviously at a different, completely different level. I mean, a fast food restaurant is miles away from anything to do with fine dining. Yeah, but you know, you still want to produce quality for, yeah, the, f- for, the, for the spend. It sounds fantastic, but this place is costing Barry over £8,000 a week on food and staff costs alone. And they seem to have forgotten the three most important things in the restaurant business. Customers, customers, customers. Four days a week, okay, the restaurant's dead. Two soup, one non and one cheese sandwich. And every night it's empty, it's another big dent in Barry's investment and Louis ego. Uh, sometimes you get zero. Really? Uh, yeah. Must be hard that when it's zero, no? Yeah. Especially with all this team here. It's a nightmare for us. Does it hurt? Yeah, a bit, yeah. You've got the team, but you want to play. You're ready to go. But... Oh, yeah. That's difficult. We, like, we are like dogs, you know, uh, when they go shooting. Yeah. We are ready. Louis's hungry for success, but the locals aren't biting. Can you do me a favour? Can you um, read that out for me? Oh, gosh, I can't say that. What really Bollinger do? of Jerusalem artichoke. Do you know what that is? <laughs> One glance at his menu, and I think I've spotted the problem before I've even tasted the food. Not sure. Declinization uh-huh. of salmon. Barragoolies Joss. That sounds good. <laughs> How's your goolies? Yeah. Barragoolies. That, that doesn't sound very appetising. Well, no, I'd probably order that one. <laughs> what do you think that means? This food may appeal to the connoisseurs in the south of France. I haven't got the fog. But this is Scotland's smallest city. Right, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Would you eat that? Would I eat it? Aye. You can't even eat it, so you don't know what it is. <laughs> Thanks very much. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Barry and Lewick want Michelin level success, but I'm afraid they've lost sight of the basics. You are an impatient bastard. Yeah. You want, uh, <laughs> you, 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 you want, you want it, and you want to get your shopping trolley and go along and get that and get that, and, and you know, I can see it in your eyes. You've had a, a lot yep. of success beforehand, yep. Yep. bringing all these things in together. Yep. It's not the perfect recipe for an instant hit. Right. I'm just worried that you don't fall into the same fucking trap that I did, and I lost a lot of money. Right. It was a proud day for me when I opened Amaryllis in my hometown, Glasgow. We got off to a great start, and within our first year, we'd won a Michelin star. But as the menu became more elaborate, the diners started to dwindle. The food was so fancy, it put off the locals. They stopped coming, and I was forced to close Amaryllis down. It's a bit of a deja vu for me, and I'm concerned that you may be running what? too quickly, too soon. You know, you're in danger of fucking going too far. That happened to me after 12 years at the top. I saw, sir. There's no doubt in Louis's talent. It's his lack of experience that worries me. One scallop, table three. It's his first ever head chef's job. There's always a big, big trap they fall in. Are we finished? Where they try to do too much too soon and almost try to be sort of competitive and thinking that what they saw in their previous kitchen, which was in a three mission star, I've got to be better than that. And that's where a lot of young chefs fail. Could you check table 10 for me, please? You put the name and everything, huh? It's my second day at La Riviera, a top restaurant with no customers. So if the locals aren't eating here, where are they eating? Busy for lunch. Fuck me, 5 95 for two courses. Starter and main. Inverness is a fast-growing city, and the restaurant market is clearly thriving. 7 95 is fucking cheap, isn't it? Now? Look, early supper menu, two courses, 9 95 I've asked Louis to serve me dinner from his a la carte menu, which costs £34 for two courses. Yeah. With that team in there and the produce in the fridge, it's to die for. Um, so it should be a great dinner. I'm looking forward to this one. One scallop to follow one duck, the, the breast pink. Yes, yes. Allez, let's go. This is your canapé. You have an olive medallion and a cheese beignet. Canapés and a pre-starter. This is ambitious food for London, mm. let alone in Vaness. Potato soup with um, wasabi. Mm, very creamy. Very, very rich. I, I, I'm excited about the food, but I don't feel comfortable sat here. You are like a painter. You need, you need, a, you need a good eye. You know, like the paint, he will put something like black here and not here, because for him, it doesn't look right. Okay, okay. Let's go. One scallops. Table nine. Very complicated. A lot of mm, 
A lot of um, combinations of flavours going on. For me, the golden rule is always keep it simple. You're tasting a broad bean and white asparagus and a citrus vinaigrette, a confit tomato, fennel seeds, fennel flowers, chervil, salad, parmesan. There must be 20 things going on this plate. And then, you yeah, know, that looks fantastic. But... It doesn't do anything, really. Next up, duck on deux service. This is a duck leg. Decided to make it a ravioli on duck leg for the nine. A good um, 10 to 12 flavours on the plate again. It's just confusion. And your mind is sort of working overtime to try and understand what's happening. OK, service, please. A main course served in two parts. That's just pretentious. Almost like someone um, is uncontrollable and almost like a little bit carried away and um, overexcited and nothing saying, just stop, come back. Oh la la. Is that all for me? Yes, it's all for me. Louis himself. seems desperate to impress. Next, they'll be telling me how to eat it. If I may, to recommend you the order. You've got the tiramisu first, uh -huh. please. Then the floating island. Yep. Then you'll have the souffle. Mm -hmm. Then the sorbet. Mm -hmm. Finally, the cornetto with marmalade. Yeah. Well, that a bollocks. Next, we'll be told which direction to pee in because of the fucking salmon in the river. Technically, flavours were amazing. The scallops were delicious. Mm -hmm. The um, light vinaigrette. And did it need the parmesan? Did it need the flowers? And do you need that many flavors to make it work? I won't change anything on the flavor. I think the way we work, the product um, bring to the guest the, the flavors yeah. that I want. Your personality has to be comfortable mm -hmm. on the plate. And I see a lot of uneasiness on the plate. I don't know if you're confident enough in what you're doing. And I've got to be very honest because this is very crucial. But this, 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 this has to work. Mm -hmm. Barry, what do you think? When you think about it, it's probably right mm -hmm. that he has to just find his own style. Barry's acting more like a besotted sugar daddy than Lewick's boss. You take on somebody like that and you're taking them on because of their capabilities and their ambition. And, you know, the last thing I want to try and do is restrain that ambition and, and what he's doing. I'm not, you know, I'm not a chef and I couldn't do what he does. I'm not really in a position to criticise. One sea bus, one grill. But I am. This place isn't even breaking even. And yet Barry's forking out four and a half grand a week just on staff. Allez, service. It's no way to run a successful business. Barry's in love with you. Uh, no, you're not too... No, no, no but uh, no, he's in love with your food. Um, yeah, I think he like it, yeah. He's never going to be your critic. And what I've got to understand is where is your critic coming from? Uh, uh. Who's telling you to stop? That's it, send it. When I think it's all right, don't touch it anymore. It goes. It goes. No wonder his food's over the top. Now I want to see how he runs his kitchen. Scalpel. Squeezes. Forceps. As every plate journeys around the kitchen, each of his seven chefs adds another flourish. And all this unnecessary fussing is wasting time and money. Hurry up now. Yeah, all done. There's so many hands that are going on around the kitchen. The mm. plate, is that normal for it to go around? Can they not finish anything? They need my sauce. It's the same for the lobsters, they need my sauce. OK. You put the plate under the grill and yes. I sauce, OK? Service, please. Service. Oh, one is missing. No, 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 it's OK. It's OK, sorry. Okay. Yes, yes. Hmm, fucking hell. It feels like we've done 250. And all we've cooked in the last um, two and a half hours is um, 10. Service, please. One I felt that I wanted to just say stop. What you've got at the beginning was just enough for me. I prefer something more simple. Simple because the ingredients you've got uh -huh. are phenomenal. He needs to let his food speak for itself. His approach feels outdated and pretentious. Is it easier if we maybe cook a dish, uh -huh. uh, like cook the scallops and look at the difference and, and, and go through it together that way? Mm. Right, uh, what should we do? Scallops? Um, now, now. Whatever. Um, I've got a few things to do for, okay. for the guests tonight, and I'll be with you. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
If the restaurant was full, I could understand his arrogance. But it's hemorrhaging cash, and no one seems to care. It's almost like um, the barricades are up and you know, nothing's going to get through, because all I want to do is do the dish together and look at the different stages we're taking out to make it more appealing. But it doesn't seem to sort of sink in. I only want to be part of the team. Just let me in. Being hard ass is, you know, nice, but when you're in this situation with over complex food and no direction, I'd fucking grab that kind of insight if I was in his shoes. The owner trusts me completely. I can do what I want, whatever I want. So it was a deal between us. Carte blanche on whatever I do. Louis behaving like a spoiled brat. So as a last resort, I'll try his brigade. Is there something you can, you know, work closely course, with Louis? Yeah? You cannot make the food too complex. You can help us as well, I'm sure. I want to help. Yeah. Definitely. Let me fucking in. Yeah. Yes? First, I'm going to tackle the language barrier. I'm going to have to get you speaking fluent Scottish. Dirty wee bastard. Dirty wee bastard. No, too far. Dirty wee bastard. <laughs> it's getting there. Dirty wee bastard. Sorry? It's fluent in Scottish now. All right. <laughs> so when someone upsets him in the high street... Dirty wee bastard. Or piece off. Or <laughs> Piss off. No, piss off. Piss off out of my way. Oh, fucking hell. Uh, uh, fucking hell, eh? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> fucking hell, yeah? I'm making headway with the team. And perhaps I can get through to Lewick if we're on neutral ground. Are you familiar with any of the songs? Do you know what they sing here? Piss off the fans inside your neck. I wouldn't shout that here if I was <laughs> I'm not sure the locals will appreciate French football songs any more than they'll appreciate Louis's food. I look at your situation and I can't stop comparing it to my situation when um, I opened up in my hometown in Glasgow. It, it, it got too serious uh, and then everybody was scared to come. And then we lost a lot of money. And, you know, What's the point in keeping a restaurant open if you're losing money? Yeah. And it, it, it broke my heart. And that was yeah, my hometown. Yeah. I was born there. And that's what you know, I don't want to see happen with you. Yeah. You're running La Riviera um, like a three Michelin star establishment. And you've started at such a high level. I don't know if, if it is at such a high level. I mean, um, when you practice with, I mean, like your chefs, when they practice sure. with you, one day they will go by their own. What Absolutely. Do you, what do you think they're going to do? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, Chips and uh, fish. I know, but you've got to start with the locals. It's not going to survive unless that restaurant's full. So what do the locals want? Some uh, mustard or ketchup? Uh, mustard, please. Thank you. You have to help yourself, you lazy <laughs> bastard. Thank you. You can't beat an Aberdeen Angus steak sandwich. That's not bad, though, is it? That's not bad. Oh, this is good, huh? And when you've got such good local produce, you don't need to mess with it. He didn't give me my change back, did he? I don't think No. See, he's really Scottish. It's already my third day, but nothing's sinking in. Surely Lewick can't ignore the evidence if it's staring him in the face. This isn't a meal for six. All this is dinner for one at La Riviera. Looks like a fucking feast for a king. Henry VIII. Uh, it's quite interesting when you um, start from one end and go all the way right to the very end. It helps you to identify where you can just draw back a little bit mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. look at the whole balance of exactly what you're doing. And people have to understand that they are here to enjoy it. Mm -hmm. So they have to spend a, a bit more of time on the table, like just say, OK, we've got two hours and a half yep. to enjoy it. I couldn't eat all that. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'd have to stop halfway, I think. I'd, I'd stop halfway. Yes? I don't know. Um, if I was not able to, to eat all this, I wouldn't do it. What Louis can't get into his stubborn French brain is that refusing to trust his ingredients isn't just putting off his customers. It's also a turn-off for Michelin inspectors. Maybe I can convince Barry. It is his money, after all. Recommend me a whiskey. I'll yeah. try to explain in terms that any hot-blooded Scotsman will understand. And one for uh, Barry, please, because yes, obviously of Barry's paying, so... <laughs> Can I just have a touch of ice in there, please? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Um, Thank you. Do I have a touch of soda in there, please? No, because you're going to spoil the, completely the, the, the drinks. Are you suggesting or telling me? 
um, doing both. And no yes. way is soda on a, on a morch mousse. There's no way. No. Let me just say something. Uh, you're absolutely right. You don't fuck with things that are good. And the first thing I said to Livik about the food, when you've got quality ingredients, let them speak for themselves. And when you've got something as good as that, yep. that speaks volumes, doesn't need anything else. No fucking parsley, no shovel, no bay leaf, no fucking fruit garden, nothing. Yes. Just bang, get it out. Do you understand? Yeah, I do. Barry seems to be getting it, and I've got an idea that just might convince his chef. The Saint Jack dish. I want you to cook that, and I'm going to cook a Saint Jack dish alongside you. There's a lot of way to do it, I mean, like... Yeah, no, 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 that's what, no, no, of course, you know, it's just I'm 38, I'm 10 years older than you, yeah, I, you know, and so it's not because I'm fucking 10 times better than you, I just want to make you understand how I think. Ah. Yeah? Okay. Okay, Monoui. What Lewick doesn't know is that I've invited ex-AA inspector David Young to judge the dishes for himself. And what he won't know is whose is whose. Thank you. Very well, thank you. My Saint Jack dish has just four simple ingredients, as well as the scallops, it has a cauliflower puree and a caper and raisin dressing. How long for you? Uh, 30 seconds. Louis dish has at least 14 different flavours. So you've got the new season asparagus, white asparagus with roasted scallops. Uh, you've got a fennel artichoke and anise jus. And I mix it with the fennel milk. Okay. You've got the Parmesan crisps. And you've got the broom. Thank you, Dan. It's time to let Lewick into my little secret. Um, I've arranged for the inspector, mm -hmm. the AA guy, mm -hmm. to come and taste our food. Thank you. Go, darling, please. So they're going to make like a competition. Go, darling. The, pla the assets are not too short. Bon food inspectors are feared and revered by chefs all over the country. If they judge your food worthy of Michelin stars or AA rosettes, the reward is a place on the gastronomic map. Thank you very much, thank you. Thanks. And ideally, customers beating a path to your door. Thank you. Will he prefer Louis' elaborate plateful or my simpler rendition? This particular one has much more visual impact. I get the feeling that the dish is going to taste of exactly what was described to me. Whereas this one looks a little bit over garnished. Uh, there's a bit of a muddle of different types of flavours. Inspectors like David can make or break a restaurant's reputation. Introduce you to Lewick. If Lewick is going to gain a coveted Michelin star, his food really needs to be worthy of four rosettes. How difficult, David, is it to get four AA rosettes? Well, it's very difficult because, to put it into context, as at this moment, there are only two AA four rosette restaurants in Scotland. In the whole of Scotland? In the whole of Scotland. Is it a four star dish, what you've eaten? This one, Gordon? Yes. No. No, th this particular dish would be uh, somewhere between two and three rosettes, mm -hmm. whereas this dish would be probably four rosettes. Mm -hmm. The combination of the cauliflower and caper puree just absolutely lifted the dish into a different dimension. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Whereas this one, some of the flavours were overcomplicated, to, to be frank about it. Mm -hmm. And it may be just a case of um, sometimes um, Less is actually more. Louis has taken the news badly. He thinks I've stitched him up. Anglo-French relations have hit an all-time low. But time is running out at La Riviera. It's got to work, hasn't it? It's your first headshot job. You can't afford to fuck that. Will I ever make princes out of this colony of frogs? Bye. Smile! <laughs> Fucking hell, it doesn't cost anything in Scotland. <laughs> I'm getting towards the end of my week at La Riviera, and I don't know if Lewick is still speaking to me. Last night he reacted badly when an AA inspector confirmed that his food was over fussy. What was the first thing you thought about this morning after um, Yesterday with the inspector. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What was the what was the one message you you, you learned from it? Um, now I had your advice. I had his, his, his advice as well. So one, you can say maybe he's wrong. Mm -hmm. Two, uh, you start to take care of that thing and uh, 
maybe I am wrong. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a difficult thing to accept. The French franc has finally dropped. It's been hard for Louis, but he's already changing his game plan. He's come up with a new, much simpler idea for the scallop dish. It looks fucking brilliant. Uh -huh. And what I can identify now, I know there's apple because you kept the green on there. I know there's rocket. I know there's pumpkin seed. And it, it makes me feel comfortable because I know what I'm about to eat. Yeah. I can identify what you're doing. That, that's delicious. Everything that goes on the plate has to have a reason. Yeah. Not for this, but for here. For the palate. Yeah, for the palate. And what you've just done there, Louis, you've given your food clear mm -hmm. insight. OK. We understand. It's not three, four, five or is that for me? I'd be happy eating that anywhere, you know that. Mm. Where's that fucking inspector? <laughs> Putain. Fucking hell. Hallelujah. I've just taken fucking France. Now Lewick has finally swallowed his pride, we can begin to move forward. With his team behind him, maybe he has a chance of achieving his ultimate goal. Um, you told me that you wanted a Michelin star. And at first, I didn't think that was possible, you know that, because of how things got so complicated. But with this here, there's no two ways about it. It's definitely worth the star. I respect Lewick for taking it on board, yeah. because it's a fucking hard lesson. Yeah. Very hard lesson, but, you know, it's got to work, hasn't it? Mm. It's your first head chef job. Mm. You can't afford to fuck that. Yep. Crucial. You've got the right training. Now you've got the perfect position to do it. Mm. But winning over the kitchen is only half the battle. Carolyn is the maitre d', and she's also Louis's girlfriend. <laughs> she's responsible for writing the elaborate menus, and I've already discovered that the locals haven't got a clue what they mean. It's time to turn the tables. Uh, read that for me. Crunching pepper red with massed tatties. Nice. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Dirty, we busted. <laughs> to prove a point, I've given them a menu of classic Scottish dishes. What do you think it is? Something sexy? Uh, <laughs> something um, spicy? Tatties. Tatties. Louis, what do you think that one is there? <laughs> this one here. Red is for far. And we talk about in salad of grits. No idea at all. What is Queen Marie Tart? Queen Marie Tart. <laughs> Queen Marie Tart. Yeah. And we paid the uh, <laughs> and cream. crumble crunch. Do you have any idea what I'm trying to yes. say? It's impossible to choose uh, anything you don't understand. Exactly. That's exactly it's what it is. It's difficult for make a choice when you have this one because it's. Yes, that's you know? it's, huh? it's yeah. difficult for yeah. fucking yeah. Scotland to yeah. understand okay. you guys. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm trying to he's say. Same. Yeah, he's same. Yeah. So yeah. it's less intimidating if you have an assortment of salmon, um, you know, a, a selection of uh, mandarin. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Mm -hmm. yeah. At last, I'm getting somewhere. Okay. Just look at what you're taking to the table. And. Fucking hell. You know, it's like you're a librarian. Yep. You should see what it's like when the table are sat and six of them are looking in here. Yep. You've lost everybody. Yeah. Yeah. There's no dinner anymore yep. because everyone's behind a brick wall. Yep. You can simplify the whole yep. thing. Yep. Just one beautiful open card, starters mains. Yep. So everything going down there has simplified it. And it's not just the menus that need lighting up. Smile, no, mon ami. <laughs> smile. Yes. He's far better yeah. looking when he's smiling. Ah, smile! Yes. <laughs> Fucking hell, it doesn't cost anything in Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> well tried, yeah. Oh, fucking hell, throw him in the river. We're supposed to be in a restaurant, not a Sunday school church service. Where's my Bible? Barry's grasped the nettle and has radical plans to transform the dining room. We're going to take this column away. Yep. We're going to take the raised area away at the back uh -huh. on that side. So we've got at a cost of £35,000. The arches over the doors we're going to square off. Yeah. And then it's all panelled mm -hmm. all the way around. Some nice artwork. It doesn't look that bad, does it? And it, it doesn't look, I don't think it looks particularly. Yeah, it's not glamorous, but it's, it's not, not glamorous, it's but not it's shitty. Is no, it? but no. it's just not. I just think it doesn't look right. But I've got a low-cost idea, okay. which I think will give La Riviera a unique selling point. I said, yes, salad. 
I'd like you to start thinking about having a table in the kitchen where you have locals to come and sit and eat. Uh -huh. yeah. It starts to break up the sort mm. of wall mm. that you know, sometimes you have when you yeah. come to a strange new country. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. As I've discovered, having a chef's table in the kitchen is a great way to bring customers into your world and keeping the chefs on their toes. And this would be the first restaurant in Scotland to have one. I think this, this will be the best place. Yep, this is down definitely, there. yeah, just in a corner, and they will see everything. everything. Yeah. And it can help create something exciting in Venice. Can you imagine the buzz going around town? The chef's table could be a way of showing off and establishing your reputation here, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and be, be, be first. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's an exciting idea. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. for once, we're going to see how do the people react, react to your food. food. Yeah. If it's no good, I mean, like, just to throw it. Yeah. You have to take care of this. <laughs> Hopefully they won't do that. Super. But it all costs money. And although the chef's table is a great investment, until they've got customers coming in, they need to make economies elsewhere. Crab, foie gras, and hand-dived scallops, which are king scallops. So, I mean, the Rolls Royce of ingredients. I mean, everything's here. Fucking hell. Luik needs to do what I did when I started out learn to use good cheap cuts to put together an inspiring menu. Do you ever use the shen lugin? No. no. Ox tongue. Making something exquisite from a shin of beef or an ox tongue takes a lot of skill. That's the size of my feet. <laughs> and it's a great way to identify talent. Right. Um, oxtail. You, you and you, Bridges. A little competition. I want you to cook a dish, come up with something really exciting, and then Luik and myself will look at it, and the most tastiest, delicious dish will put on a lunch menu. And for me, the most important thing about this is always a sign of a very, very good cook to turn something very, very cheap into something quite special. So, Bridges, take it to bed and think about it. <laughs> <laughs> Next morning, I'm pleased to see the young chefs have taken their oxtail challenge seriously. What's that? Yes. And uh, Pull through, yeah. And so it's very, you know? Yep, nice and long. Very wrong. Yep. Yep, roll it, put it back into oxtail uh, shape from mm -hmm. the beginning. That's a good idea. Yeah. Juice reduction. Mm -hmm. Reduction uh, yeah. glass. Like a font. Yeah. yeah. Um. The oxtail dishes for the lunch menu are almost ready and they've each cost about a quid to put together. So this is braised dog steak with uh, winter vegetable, braised jam lettuce. Dishes like these are not only highly profitable, but bringing together great Scottish produce with French flair is a winning formula. I like the jus and just a bit of Australian. Yes, taste delicious with the white root vegetables. It made it feel earthy and, and, and together. Thank you. Yeah. Who's next? And despite what Louis thinks, Simplifying his dishes will actually make them more likely to win awards. I've never had oxtail and sesame seed together before. Michelin inspectors never reveal their criteria, but I know from experience that beautifully cooked food is not enough. Next. Inspectors look for good quality it's, ingredients, uh, ideally uh, regional uh, and definitely in season. And I put uh, carrots, mm -hmm. celery. This idea is great. And the balance of flavours is yeah. crucial. Very rich. It needs a salad. Yeah, because it's quite rich. And what I like is when you put the salad just next to and not mm -hmm. on a plate like this, you can choose. Thank but you. first and foremost, okay. don't confuse a Michelin inspector's palate by putting too many ingredients on the plate. I never expected anyone French to come up with a jack and potato mm -hmm. stuffed. Thank you. The simpler, the better. Um, what do you think? Brilliant idea. Mm -hmm. Flavors are very good. What you've managed to do is to bring out the true flavor of oxtail. Well, oh. Thank you. <laughs> okay, Mel Gibson. <laughs> Any one of these dishes would be worthy of a place on the lunch menu, but we're choosing just one. I want to see if Luik and I will agree on the winner. I'm going to touch my plate, which I'd like on the lunch menu, uh -huh. and you touch the plate after three. Yeah. Okay. One, two, three. Equal. Bravo. Oh. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well done. Let's go. It was real and authentic Scottish food. Yep. That's. I think he understood, really understood where we want to go. With Lewick leading the way, we're ready to relaunch the restaurant. 
For me, it's a critical stage for any restaurant is to get a lunch full. And if our customers have an enjoyable lunch, chances are they'll be back for a more expensive a la carte dinner. And when they leave with a bloody good lunch, good prices, I can guarantee by the time five o'clock in the afternoon hits, you know, they've told 100 people, go there for dinner because I had a fantastic lunch. I want to see if we can push this starter, main and dessert, one hour. Yeah. As well as the new oxtail dish, the menu will include mackerel, pheasant and goat's cheese ravioli, venison from Barry's estate, tuna and the cheapest cut of pork. Customers sometimes are scared about belly of pork, thinking fat, greasy. We've taken the fat off, rolled it, um, spiced on a bed of spinach. Um, it's a caramelised onion puree. Have a taste if you wish. And I've got some other ideas to give Scottish traditional dishes a modern twist. This is a soup that doesn't look pretty, uh -huh. but tastes amazing. They wouldn't expect the Frenchman to make a cooking soup, uh -huh, uh -huh. which is a really nice way of um, yeah, putting your identification on it. Uh, Louis, just an idea for the rice pudding. Yeah. We grew up with this kind of food, so <laughs> we can go a little bit further. Caramelised pineapple, mango, or even marinate the prunes in a, a nice small whiskey. Yeah. Yeah? That'd be very great. The kitchen's finally turning out the kind of food that I know will definitely appeal to the locals. And even the waiters have promised to try and smile. But there's one more thing to complete the transformation. You've got to come with me now, because we're going to become even more Scottish. Any ideas yet? Bridges, have you ever taken your knickers off before? No. No. <laughs> Chance to show Amy Lush your Scotch eggs. OK. <laughs> it's time for Lewick and his small colony of French comrades to surrender themselves to the Scots. <laughs> <sighs> Fucking hell. The things I'll do to get the arrogant French to become a little bit more Scottish is amazing. You know that? It's corn! <laughs> well, how do you put it on? We don't wear pants underneath our coats. It's wonderful. Very hot. And it's very sexy. Yeah. <laughs> There's 25 very important guests coming for lunch. Yes? yes? But some really good news. Uh-huh. They're all women. Nice. nice. Very powerful women. Super. If they can impress 25 influential local businesswomen, they'll be the talk of the town. Do you know who the ox tail on the Yes. <laughs> there were two four guests. One potato soup, vegetarian. Three ox tail, two for one yoki. Two minutes on, one tuna. At last, Lewick's team are beginning to dance to a different tune. The food looks really good. Clear and simple. Fucking fast. I think everyone's coping really, really well. But it's the first time I've actually seen a real taste of Scotland in this kitchen. About fucking time. Just after this, we have to go for two four. Lewick's on his way to the top of the Premier League. Allez, go. The wonderfully presented is gorgeous. And judging by the reaction of his fans, he's definitely scored. Absolutely divine. Just perfect. Absolutely perfect. Beautiful. You couldn't fault anything, really. I, I would imagine normally this sort of food, you'd be talking at least a couple of hours for lunch, but to get something like this in that time scale, brilliant. It's beautiful. <laughs> you have tried. You win this. <laughs> <laughs> and Roto, OK? It's for you, a present. Thank you. Uh, uh, excuse me. What the fuck is that? Who is that? <laughs> I think it's a big chef. And what is that there? Ah, <laughs> balls. Balls, yeah. yeah. Trust me, I have a big pair of bollocks. <laughs> Ali Le Bleu. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Chin chin. Chin. Lewick and his team have come a long way this week. And if he sticks to my keep it simple mantra, then I think La Riviera yes. might be on the right track for a Michelin star. Outside.
just for the ladies, Regis, to understand that you really are part of Scotland now, we're all going to turn around. Turn around, turn around, oh, turn around. Ready? One, two, three, go! Right, Louis. It's been two months since I was at La Riviera. Bonjour. Have you missed me? Oh, a little bit, yeah. So, what's changed? OK, you take one pork, one ravioli, table four. The menu looks lovely. And you've got um, cheaper ingredients on? Ox cheek for the lunch menu? Yeah. Uh-huh. I'm dying to taste the pork cheese. Can you cook me one, please? Yeah, of course. You know, with the uh, risotto? Yeah. It looks lovely. Oh, yes, yeah, very nice. Uh, that looks interesting. Is that the chef's table? Yes, yeah, so I'm finishing the chef's table. Very impressed with that. That looks great. Yeah. It's good to see he's acted on my advice. But the proof of the pudding is in the eating. Here we are, monsieur. Thank you, uh, Louis. Um, the pork chick mm -hmm. is a uh, ebli risotto and yeah. chanterelle. A dish with just four ingredients. Mm. Absolutely delicious. That, for me, so far, is one of the most tasty dishes I've ever eaten here. Uh -huh. Really, really delicious. If you continue like this, this place is only going to just get busier and busier and busier. That's what we want. That's a great dish to be proud of. Mm -hmm. Thank you. How's the refurb been going on in the dining room? Dining room is finished for one week now. Wow. Fuck me, what a difference. Bloody hell. It looks a lot more um, slick, smart. smart. Barry must have spent a fortune on it. Beautiful uh, dark panel wood. Um, a completely different dining room. Huh? It is. It is another restaurant. It feels more relaxed, but is it money well spent? Has anything improved since the last time I was here? Yeah, the restaurant's bookings have improved. Uh -huh. We just, you know, looked at what you told us mm -hmm. on simplifying the menu, writing yep. the menu. A mission star? I would love, love to get one. But what's more important for me at the moment is that we build the customers. It's certainly come a long way from the restaurant I found two months ago. Yeah, all done. His food was so elaborate. Let's go. There must be 20 things going on this place. It had frightened off the customers. Oh, fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> Hurry up now. He was desperate for a Michelin star, but reluctant to let me help. But by the end of the week... Bridges, take it to bed and think about it. <laughs> the message had sunk in. Hallelujah. I've just taken fucking France. And we were able to fill the stuffy restaurant with happy diners. His dream was to win awards. And with his newly simplified food, I thought Louis was finally producing dishes worthy of a Michelin star. It looks fucking brilliant. Where's that fucking inspector? <laughs> Putain. This time round, I raised the bar even higher with another surprise visitor for Louis. Last time I saw this man, he actually gave me three Michelin stars. So um, perhaps the most revered and feared critic in the world. Derek Brown is the grand fromage of restaurant inspectors. Hi, Derek. He's the ex-president of the Michelin Guide, and he's agreed to do me a favour. Um, I'm not going to say too much about this particular um, restaurant, but um, he's a very intriguing, talented individual, and just would love to see uh, what you think. What he's capable of doing. Yeah. Now, remember, you don't know me. Don't know your yeah. top okay. secret. Sure. Head chef Louis has no idea he has such an influential critic in his restaurant. Won't ask if you've been through the for his sake, I hope Derek goes for the simple pork cheek I had. The lamb, please. The lamb. Mm. Damn. Choice. How would you like it cooked, sir? Um, pink, please. Pink? Yeah. To me, the Scottish lamb with stuffed baby artichokes looks just as elaborate as it did two months ago. I see you've got your herb garden back. I'm from the south of France, so herbs is very important for me. I hope right. to God I'm wrong. You can't eat it. I can't wait to see Louis's face when he realises that the food he's sending out now is for the ex-president of Michelin. He's going to shit his French knickers. Time for the moment of truth. Louis. Louis. Two seconds, please. Um, Louis, do you know this gentleman? Mm. No? no. no. Sorry, um, Mr. Derek Brown. Louis. I think I've seen you, yeah, already. Yes. Maybe in France somewhere. You. I'm so dying to find out. I'm sure Louis is as well. How was lunch? Well, it was very interesting. Your, your technique, you, I mean, you've been very careful about the whole preparation of each mm -hmm. of your dishes. But, you know, it was 
too complicated. There were ten different flavours on the plate. Mm -hmm. There was garlic and herbs in the artichoke, which is itself a delicate thing, a little bit overpowering, I thought. The shoulder, which you'd done a confit of, that was the tastiest part of the dish. The million-dollar question, uh, was lunch worthy of a Michelin star? I would, I would say that you, you have not got very far to go. I never gave advice in my working life before, but if you want me to give you some advice, I, I would simplify what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Make sure that the customers are going to be happy with every dish that you ever make them. And things like stars from the Michelin Guide will follow. Mm -hmm. The old boys have got to be replaced, so it's up to you, and, and you've got the talent. Just, just use it and refine it. Mm -hmm. But has the message really sunk in? Or is he still intent on forcing over-elaborate French food on the locals? This is our challenge. This is not to bring people sure. like you do in London. Mm. The challenge is to teach them and to bring them in. Yeah, yeah. That's why you have to make something really special. Yeah. Fuck me. I mean, my, my, my frustrating thing is that you've really got to understand the message because, you know, I fucking said this from day one and I'm not an inspector, I'm a chef and I see it from your level. Will he ever understand that simple can also be special? One salmon, one venison. So, are you feeling a little nervous about the chef's table in the kitchen tonight for the first time? If they see a nightmare, yeah, they're yeah. going to say, look, this fucking French is fucking crazy. No, I think they'll be very happy with the fucking nightmare. With a fully booked restaurant tonight <laughs> and his first diners in the kitchen, <laughs> Louis should be a very happy man. OK, uh, mon ami, bonne chance. Allez les bleus. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. So I hope you're glad to be the first in my uh, kitchen table. Um, I will make you a bit of music for you if you want. I can, I can manage this. We'll never be the best of mates, but we do have one thing in common. Ambition. Remember what he said, that thing about 12 or 15 things on one plate? Yeah. So next time you put a dish together and you've gone past eight, nine, ten things on the plate, mm -hmm. give me a fucking call, because I'm coming back when you get to 11. OK? Ali okay. Lepleu. Bonne chance. Yes? Good luck tonight, yes? Because yeah. I think you're going to fucking need it. Ciao, ciao. Bon soirée. I sincerely hope he makes it a success. Who knows? Maybe the Michelin star will follow. Mm -hmm.